Hi, and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to set up a document in Animate CC, which used to be called Flash Professional CC until last year. So if you're making something in Animate, you're generally making something for the web, which is gonna be played in a browser, or you're gonna be making something for video, which is either gonna be put on DVD or Blu-ray or played on YouTube as a video file. And they're two completely different types of projects. So if you're making something for the web, you've got two options here, HTML5 and WebGL. If you're making something for video, you wanna be choosing ActionScript 3. That's an old school flash document, but it gives you more options for symbol effects and other things that are very useful for video that tend to run quite slowly or don't work at all yet in HTML5. So if you're making something for the web, you're probably gonna choose HTML5 WebGL is still in preview at the moment and it's not widely used, whereas HTML5, you'll be able to watch an HTML5 canvas animation on an iPhone or an iPad or an Android device, a Mac or a PC. It's very widely supported. Flash Play used to be what was widely used to display animation in a browser, but it's fallen out of favor now and for the most part, it's blocked by default in Chrome and Safari. So people don't tend to use it anymore. So if you were making a banner advertisement for the internet or some kind of animation that you wanted to show in a browser, you would click on HTML5 canvas in the create new section. So let's click on that. And what that does is it creates a new document for us in animate. And I'll just guide you through exactly what all the stuff we're seeing is. So if you wanna make sure that you've got exactly the same screen as me, go to the window menu and go to workspaces and choose small screen, or you could choose classic. I'm using a small screen at the moment, so this animation plays nicely on YouTube. But if you've got a monitor bigger than 15 inches, you wanna use the classic layout because it gives you a bit more wiggle room and more room to see all of your stuff. But if you've got either of those selected, you'll have all of these windows here. Here we've got the stage, that's where all your content goes, any drawings and animations. This is what the audience will see. Over here on the left, we've got our toolbar. This is where all our tools live. If you want to learn how to use those, do check out my other tutorials on the drawing tools and the transform tools, etc. I'm not gonna cover them in this very brief roundup of the interface. Down here, we've got the timeline. This is where we move through time. Each one of these rectangles represents one frame of the animation, and frames are how we measure animation length. How many frames per second does the animation run at? How many frames of animation have we done? And we can see the frame rate down here. The current frame rate of this document is 24 frames per second. So to get a second of animation, we would have to have this many frames, 24. We also have the layers here. You can make a new layer by clicking here and you can move the layers up and down depending on which one you want to appear on top of another. You can rename them by double clicking on them like so. You can create layer folders and you can delete a layer by clicking on the dustbin or trash can here. Let's take a look at properties. This tells us everything that we need to know about our document. So we can see that it's an HTML5 canvas document. Its name is untitled-3. Our frames per second down here in properties is 24. So 24 is what you want to use if you're making something to be shown on film or at the cinema. If you're in Europe and you're making something for video, you want to use 25 because that's the PAL frame rate. If you're in America, you want to use 29. 0.97 frames per second. That's often rounded up to 30. So that's the NTSC frame rate. If you're making a game, you might want a frame rate at about 60 because you want to make sure that the animations of your player's character move quickly enough. And when you're working in HTML5, the frame rate really depends on how much is going on in the scene, how complex it is, and how fast the computer running it is. So you should aim for a realistic frame rate. I'm going to put mine at 25. We've got the width and height here. It'll default to 550 by 400. 
and you can scale these up and down by hovering over them and you can move them up and down and you can see our stage is changing accordingly. I'm going to undo that with Control Z or Command Z on the Mac. Uh, if you click on this magnet in the middle, when you move them, they'll move together and keep the same ratio. If we go to Advanced Settings, here we've got a really useful function called Scale Content, which is relatively new. Um, this means that if you make your project at the wrong size, you can enter in a new size and then click Scale Content and all of your drawings and all of your assets will be resized to the new size of the document. You didn't used to be able to do that and it was a real pain if you got it wrong. The stage color is useful for creating a colored background, but I don't tend to use it. I tend to leave it on white because in most cases when you export the animation, Animate will ignore what the stage color is and just show it as transparent. So if you want to make sure that you've actually got a stage color, I tend to make a new layer and call it background. And I'll draw a rectangle with the rectangle tool in that layer there. So something like that. You can see it's overlapping the edges a bit there. And I'll pull it down to the bottom of the layer stack and there we go. And I'll lock it so I can't accidentally draw on top of it there. So there we go. That's an HTML5 document. So let's close that down and create an accent script document. So if I was to make something that I wanted to encode into video and put on YouTube, for example, or if I was making a commercial animation that I wanted to send to a client as a video that they could play in a video player, then I'd want to choose Accent Script 3 because it gives me more options than HTML5 does. And if I'm not making it interactive, that doesn't matter. So this is the kind of old school format that actually lets you do more than HTML5 does. So I'm going to click Accent Script 3. And things look pretty much the same. We've got the stage, we've got the toolbar, we've got the timeline. That's all exactly the same. Over here in Properties, you can see that it just says document. It's actually an action script document. You can see that it says action script for the scripting here. And if we exported it, it would come out in Flash Player. But with this type of document, I tend to go to File, Export, Export Video. That's how I'd get it out to video. When Animate was called Flash, in the past, it wasn't very good at exporting video. For the past few years, it's been great. It's been completely rewritten and it exports video at a very high quality via Adobe Media Encoder. So again, we've got the frame rate and the width and height. If we click on the publish settings here, they're a little bit different. We've got control over the quality of any bitmaps in our sequence. They tend to get rendered as JPEGs, even if they're a PSD. I tend to put that up to the top if I'm making stuff for video. The audio stream affects any streaming audio that you have. I don't tend to use event sound if I'm making stuff for video because it makes things very difficult. And I tend to push that up to the highest quality and untick this convert to mono. And I didn't mention this earlier. This isn't unique to Action Script, but if you want to zoom in or zoom out with your document, you can choose a percentage to zoom in. I tend to use this show all or fit in window. That's very useful. If I draw another large rectangle here that overlaps the edge of the stage, there's a new feature here. If we click on this icon, it clips out any extraneous content in the clipping area. That's this gray area outside of the stage to give you an idea of what your audience will see. And that's really useful. Here we've got access to our symbols, but we don't have any in this document. And here we've got access to scenes. Scenes are something that you can only use in action script documents, and they're just a really useful way of carving up your action into manageable chunks, just like you would in a film. So as well as creating documents in the Create New menu, you've also got access to loads of templates that come bundled with Adobe Animate CC. If we click on those, there's lots of different sections. For example, if you were making an HTML5 banner, they've got all the standard sizes here. 336 by 280 large rectangle. If you click OK, 
it'll open that up and it'll have all the properties set up for you as you like them. In this case, it's set up an ActionScript 3 document by default. You can change that by going to commands and convert to other document formats and you can change it to HTML5 canvas and tell it where to save it. Let's go back to the templates section. If you're making something for video, go to media playback and you can choose from the presets here. If you're making stuff for video, you generally want to make it in 720p or 1080p. They're both high definition widescreen resolutions. They tend to be known as HD ready, which is 720 or full HD, which is 1080. So if I double click on that, it'll open it up in a new document. It'll even give me title safe here and action safe to let me know where to keep my titles and action. And it will default to 29.97 frames per second. So I'm going to change that to 25. So this is ideal if you're wanting to make anything for video. You can see that we've got 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's a 1080p resolution. These numbers are a bit difficult to remember if you're new to this. So templates are really useful for setting up a document in that case. So that's it for this lesson on creating a new document in Animate CC. If you'd like to learn more, do go and check out my website, hexjibber.com forward slash learn. I've got loads of tutorials in Flash Professional CC, which is now known as Animate. And I'll see you in the next one.